Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're checking out the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3080 OC, the first AIB 3080 graphics card to come our way. And I'm very interested to see how it compares to the NVIDIA Founders Edition model. So today we'll be checking out gaming, thermal and overclocking performance. But before any of that, Today's video sponsor is MSI and their B550 Tomahawk motherboard, a board which we've tested and found to deliver excellent VRM thermal performance. And when paired with the award-winning AMD Ryzen 5 3600 6-core 12-thread processor makes for a great balanced option for gaming, content creation and productivity. With lightning fast PCIe Gen 4, 2.5 gigabits per second networking and premium build and design quality, you can enjoy flagship level features and performance at a price point that won't break the bank. Upgrade today and enjoy more cores and more performance via the links in the video description. Okay, so before we get into the benchmark data, let's tear the Tough Gaming RTX 3080 OC down and take a look at the cooler and PCB. But please note, this was done after we collected all our, well, initial thermal data from the onboard sensors and measured all the, well, the performance, the FPS stuff in the games that we're going to look at in a minute. Actually, before we do take a look at the, the card in its naked form, let's just go over what you get out of the box, what it looks like and how it compares to NVIDIA's Founders Edition model. And that is the only other point of reference we have at this point. So starting with the LED lighting, because that's important, of course, but seriously, the tough gaming is very minimalistic. So we do like to see that. There's just a small light bar above the tough gaming branding, along with a backlit logo, which faces outwards when the card is mounted traditionally. In terms of design and appearance, the Tough Gaming looks like your typical high-end graphics card. It's a 2.7 slot design, so it takes up three slots. It measures 30 centimeters long, stands 12.7 centimeters tall, and it weighs in at 1385 grams. So slightly heavier than the 1355 grams of the FE version. It is a mostly black design, so it will suit most builds, and ASUS has included a few tough theme design elements like the tire tracks on the back plate, for example. I do really like how there's no plastic on the card, apart from the fans, of course. The fan shroud, though, has been constructed from aluminium, giving it a very premium look and feel. ASUS is also using their axial fan technology, and since there are three in total, they've reversed the rotation of the center fan to reduce turbulence. And the fans themselves each measure 90 millimeters in diameter. I should also note that this graphics card includes a stop fan feature, which activates when the GPU temperature drops below 55 degrees. Then around at the I.O. end of the card, we find two HDMI 2.1 ports and three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs. So that's an extra HDMI output when compared to NVIDIA's Founders Edition version, though please note it still only supports up to four displays simultaneously. ASUS also points out that this model features a very robust stainless steel I.O. bracket, which they say protects against rust while providing a more durable and secure mount. I can't say I've ever had any issues with the standard steel brackets, but I guess if you have, this would be a welcomed feature. Okay, so let's pull this thing apart and take a better look. And we'll start with the heatsink and fans. Here we have what is a very serious looking heatsink. In fact, it really looks like something you'd expect to find on an ROG Strix model and not a tough branded card. As you can see, it is very large and it weighs in at 820 grams. There's two massive banks of fins, which are connected using half a dozen six millimeter thick nickel plated copper heat pipes and all connect to a large nickel plated copper base plate. Using a small aluminium plate, this heatsink directly cools the VRM, so that's good to see. But there is a little bit more to this design as there's a second heatsink which directly cools the GDDR6X memory as well as the rest of the VRM. It really is an impressive bit of kit and it fits snug beneath the main heatsink. ASUS have also used a few high quality thermal pads to aid in the heat transfer from the smaller heatsink to the primary heatsink. Oh, and for those of you wondering, the smaller heatsink weighs in at 70 grams. Now on the back side of the card, we find a rather thick aluminium backplate, which weighs in at 138 grams, and it's been used to strengthen the card and reduce PCB sag, or in this case, completely eliminate it. I think this actually is the thickest backplate I've ever seen on a graphics card. And ASUS has also employed a number of thermal pads to remove built up heat on the rear side of the PCB behind the VRM and GDDR6X memory chips. And then finally, at the end, we see there are a few cutouts to aid in airflow. 
Now over to the PCB, we find a 40 centimeter long by 10.6 centimeter tall PCB. So a fairly compact board really, though it is crammed full of components. Naturally surrounding the massive GA102 die are the GDDR6X memory chips and then flanking them on either side are boatloads of inductors and power stages. In total, the card packs 20 power stages and here we're looking at an eight plus six plus four power phase design using SIC 641 ACD 55 amp power stages. Though please note, two of the eight phases drive two power stages. So it is a bit of an odd configuration, but this is what ASUS has gone with. So if you're wondering what the eight and six phase portions power, well, the answer is the GPU. So 14 phases feed into the GPU or 16 55 amp power stages. The eight phase power rail is for the NVVDD and the six phase power rail is for the MSVDD, while the four phase power rail is for the GDDR6X memory. So ASUS has beefed up the tough gaming well over the Nvidia reference spec. There's also two eight pin PCIe power connectors feeding power into the graphics card. And you'll find a dual BIOS switch that allows you to change from the default performance BIOS to a quiet BIOS. Both BIOS modes run the card at 340 watts. So we're just looking at a change to the fan profile, which will see the card run hotter in the quiet mode. Now, in terms of clock specifications, ASUS lists a core clock frequency of 1850 MHz, which is a 5% boost over the 1730 MHz of the default spec. The GDDR6X memory though, that's been left at 19 gigabits per second. So we're just looking at a very mild and typical GPU overclock here. All that said, let's move on to see what clock speeds this model maintains when under load. For these GeForce 30 series graphics card reviews, I'll be using Shadow of the Tomb Raider for all my testing. And I'll be reporting the temperature after 30 minutes of gameplay. This saw the Tough Gaming peak at just 63 degrees in a 21 degree room inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, fully populated with fans. And that is a massive 15 degree drop in temperature when compared to Nvidia's Founders Edition model. To maintain this temperature, the fans spun at up to 1900 RPM. And while that is a reasonably high fan speed, the card was surprisingly quiet, generating just 42 decibels of noise, which is comparable to that of the FE version. The typical core clock frequency seen during our testing was 1935 MHz, and under the same conditions, that's a 5% increase over the Founders Edition model. This also saw power consumption increase by 7% from 323 watts with the FE model to 344 watts with the Tough Gaming version. Now, for overclocking, with the limits reached, we again saw a peak operating temperature of just 63 degrees, but this time the fans spun at up to 2000 RPM. Again though, it wasn't terribly loud at this fan speed. Now, the overclock saw the cores operate at two gigahertz and the memory also hit 20.6 gigabits per second. So a pretty impressive transfer speed there. Finally, when overclocked, the card sucked down 357 watts. So just a 4% increase from the stock factory overclocked configuration. Okay, so let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we're testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used. And for this one, we have just a few select games to look at. Starting with the Death Stranding numbers at 1440p, the Tough Gaming was just a single frame faster than Nvidia's Found Edition model hitting 158 FPS. So that's a pretty disappointing increase and I wasn't able to do much better here with a manual overclock, boosting performance by a further 2%. The results at 4K were just as underwhelming. Here the Tough Gaming was 2% faster than the FE model and our overclock netted us an extra 2% performance. Now, the gains seen in Rainbow Six Siege were a little more impressive. Here the Tough Gaming was 6% faster than Nvidia's FE model, hitting 346 FPS. So that's a pretty typical gain from a factory overclock but unfortunately, through further manual overclocking, I was only able to extract two extra frames, so well under a single percent gain there. The 4K data looks much the same. Again, the Tough Gaming was 6% faster than Nvidia's Founders Edition, and my manual overclock was pretty useless, boosting performance by just a single percent. Last up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here we're looking at a 4% increase for the Tough Gaming over the FE model at 1440p, though quite interestingly, this time our manual overclock netted us a further 3% increase. Similar margins were seen at 4K, here the Tough Gaming was 5% faster out of the box, and then 8% faster with our overclock, though that was just a 3% increase over the ASUS factory overclock. 
Here's a more in-depth look at the stock temperatures after running shut off the Tomb Raider for 30 minutes in a 21 degree room. And the PCB temperatures you see here were recorded using K-type thermocouples. For the GPU rear PCB temp, the probe is attached to the backside of the PCB directly behind the GPU. And I have to admit, I was expecting the temperature here to be quite a bit higher. So it would seem that the heatsink on the front side does a good job of extracting the heat from the GPU. The GPU die temperature is a result that you've already seen. I'm just reporting the data from the internal temp sensor here. The GDDR6X temperature has been reported by using a thermal probe attached to the PCB directly between two memory chips, so that doesn't interfere with the thermal pad and its connection with the memory chips. And this same method has also been used to measure the VRM temperature. Four probes were used to detect the VRM hotspot, and here we're looking at a peak of 66 degrees, which is very good. Overall, the Tough Gaming runs surprisingly cool. ASUS has done an excellent job with the Tough Gaming RTX 3080 OC. It's a great quality graphics card, and it's better than Nvidia's own Founders Edition model in every measurable way. It's quieter, it is significantly cooler, it's also faster out of the box, and best of all, it doesn't require a silly 12 pin power adapter or any kind of specialized cable. The only area where the FE model might be better is its physical appearance, but that's entirely subjective. And while I really do like Nvidia's version, I think the Tough Gaming still looks great. And I really appreciate the use of high quality materials for stuff like the fan shroud and the extra thick backplate. But ultimately the fact that the Tough Gaming is up to 6% faster while running 15 degrees cooler, that just sealed the deal for me. There is no way I'd buy the Founders Edition version over this ASUS model. The Tough Gaming really is just better. At this point, I'm yet to check out any other AIB models, so there might be better options available, but I can't imagine they're gonna be that much better than the Tough Gaming. For example, I've seen numerous 5700 XT graphics cards that manage to run hotter than the Tough Gaming RTX 3080 OC, so there's no denying that ASUS has done an excellent job here. And that means, should the price be right, then I see no reason not to buy this graphics card. On that note, cards are now listed online, and the Tough Gaming is $700 US. So incredibly, this is an MSRP product. That said, it was also out of stock everywhere I looked. But if you can snag one for $700, then you've done very well. I've got to say, I really was surprised by just how much better this thing is than Nvidia's own very intricate designed Founders Edition model. And I like to think that perhaps our scrutiny on the previous Tough Gaming graphics cards helped motivate ASUS to create this excellent design where the heatsink's mounted very well, very secure and very flush with the GPU die and all the other components. But regardless, I am happy to see a high quality RTX 3080 coming in at the MSRP. Really good news. Hopefully availability improves shortly. It's always a bit, well, availability is always a bit uh, dodgy straight after releases and sometimes even weeks and months after. So yeah, hopefully we'll see this in stock before too long. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I have much more content coming up on the channel regarding RTX 3080 stuff. Of course, we have the 3090 also coming up soon. But before that, we'll be doing some AMD versus Intel uh, CPU benchmarks with this thing at 1080p, 1440p, 4K. We've also got an in-depth DLSS and ray tracing. Uh, well, an, an in-depth look at that. Tim will be taking uh, over from that. I did the testing, but Tim will present it all. Uh, what else have we got? We've got uh, more in-depth PCI Express investigation. There's a whole heap of stuff. Other AIB models are coming. I've already got the uh, MSI Gaming X Trio on hand. I'm testing that pretty much as we speak. So anyway, a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, also, if you would like to get more involved with the channel, get access to our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams. There will actually be a live stream for Patreon members half an hour after this very video went live. So if you're watching this video as soon as you are notified, then there will be a live stream uh, for Patreon members uh, talking about all things RTX 3080 really. We'll be addressing any questions that our Patreon members might have. Anyway, if you're interested in that, links in the very description. You can sign up. You can also watch the live stream after the fact as well. Uh, what else? What else? I think that's pretty much everything. So at this point, I would like to just thank you for watching the video. And that's it. Thank you very much. I can't say any more. Just thank you. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.